Hi everybody, welcome back. I hope you're having fun working with your loops and uh, looking at the entire bank of loops that we've got here set. There's a lot, obviously, and uh, hopefully the choices that you have, I've talked to a few of you, you know, that doesn't uh, spin you into confusion, but it inspires you. You know, we've got a, a lot of different things, you know, in this particular case that uh, we can obviously utilize or and or not. There's a, a ton of stuff that you probably won't use. And so I hope that, uh, you know, having all of these choices is, you know, nothing but inspiring for you. So just kind of going back to our notes here, where we're at in this module, we're looking at mixing and adding effects. And I just want to spell this out exactly what we'll do and what we can do. But I certainly don't want to give you any rules. It's completely and totally up to you and how you want to use this. What we had done in the last track you know, as um, we had been, you know, talking, and of course, for those that you were, were in conference room, most of you were, we basically just added a couple, you know, effects. We added, you know, two amplifiers, and we added a guitar pedal, essentially. Another thing that I did was, is I just panned some things off a little bit. Not, you know, not too much, but a couple things here and there, just to make sure that we had some separation. Noting that our frequency balance, typically we would keep our basses in the middle, our drums, you know, in, in the percussion, we would probably, you know, center. Aside from, of course, certain percussion elements, we might want to take a shaker and move it from the left or to the right. Some of the synths and some of the interesting elements, like guitars and stuff, we could also pan those from the left or the right. They don't necessarily all have to live in the middle, but the rule of thumb, typically kick drums, bass sounds, they'll be in the middle. And a lot of times you'll, you'll notice snares are in the center, vocals are in the center, and, uh, you know, potentially even, you know, like lead sounds and things like that, uh, solos. This is your typical channel strip. I think most of you have, have seen this and looked at this. I like to just keep going over it and over it little by little, so, you know, you don't feel like you have to memorize anything. And starting, of course, from the bottom to top, if I needed to listen to each individual track, I can just simply hit solo. I can mute each individual track, of course. And this is going to be our record enable for those that are, you know, later on going to be doing custom recording. Everybody will be, of course, but uh, some of you actually have some ins and outs. You could bring in some microphones into the signal. Be awesome. And next up, we've got our amplitude. We can turn things up or down, simple volume. Our pan pot. One that we haven't talked about yet is our automation where it says read here. We'd be able to record movement in time. So it's a linear aspect, you know, as we've got something rolling, let's say if I wanted to go from left to right, back and forth in time, I could actually record that movement. And so anything that you've got, you can record motion of sound through automation. You've got your output. Stereo out's typically going to be where you're at, of course, because we are listening through our built-in output or, you know, stereo out through our I.O. or our in and out. Um, the next one I want to talk about, we'll talk about sends um, a little bit later on as we continue on, but the most important part of what we're going to talk about today is your effect insert or your slot here for your effects, and that's your audio inserts. Um, there's thousands and thousands of different sounds that you can pick from in this case too, and so think of this as just enhancing some of the loops that you've got. You know, the sky's the limit on what you can pick from. And up on the top you've got EQ and, and what we've talked about there, you know, just a, you know, uh, parametric EQ, very simple, you know, professional filter, really, I use it quite often. When we're mixing in Logic, these are the notes that, you know, I've given you. There's, you know, I, I don't want to really, you know, oversimplify, but the most important aspect in terms of mixing, I think that, you know, I found, you know, priceless was is just to simply to get started. Start doing something, see what happens as you start putting things together. You never know what happens. So, in this case, to open the mixer in Logic, just simply hold down Command-2 or simply hit X. And then once that mixer is up, we want to balance the amplitude levels. I think that's the most important part to take care of. Make sure that you're not clipping. Make sure that we keep everything at a fairly low level. And that's what we would call gain staging. You've probably heard that term before we've met. The idea of gain staging is, is to basically have everything little by little by little so that each stage down the road, you can just keep enhancing that level. So inevitably, in the end, you can get things as loud as any major label, right? So um, in the future, we'll also study using compressors for these same dynamic, uh, um, you know, staging, you know, tools. Once that's set, we can look at our pan pots. And like I was just telling you, usually you want to keep your bass and your drums, you know, it, you know, you want them to live in the middle, basically. And so once they're set, once you get the bass, the kick drum, kind of where your drums are set in the middle, then we can start thinking about, you know, maybe some of our solos. Maybe if you've got vocals, they might want to sit in the middle as well. 
Most importantly, though, you're going to have guitars, you're going to have synths and things like that. You may want some of that panned out. I think it's wise for you to do that um, just based on frequency balance. And another thing I like to do is automation. I love to pan things out and record that movement. And it's nothing that I'm requiring that you do. But for some of you, you may want to, you know, learn how to automate. And, uh, you know, it's very, very simple to do, of course. And in television and film, it's, it's vital for me. So... Um, Later on, of course, I'm going to go through a lot of these controls, so just remember that uh, in the course as we continue on, you know, we're going to go through these advanced skills. Right now, it really is just more or less just to, you know, for some of you, if you'd like to try it, try it. If not, you know, no big deal. Um, but later on, of course, it's going to be very, very different. We're going to focus on a lot of these things, including automation, for example, um, and of course, the comp you know, compressor controls. In this case, we want to look at the audio effects section. It's where all the audio effect plugins are located. Um, we can also use third-party plugins. Um, if some of you have certain plugins that, you know, that are your go-to, a lot of you know, a lot of students will, or, or a lot of my clients will use Isotope or potentially Plugin Alliance or you know, Eventide. Uh, I feel like you know, in many cases, I like to have those plugins that you have as well. So a lot of times at the schools and things like that, we'll have a lot of third-party plugins. Um, Waves, for example, you know, these are, are world-class you know, uh, processing plugins, very similar to what's within Logic, but it's just nice to have a lot of different choices, of course, right? I'll show you where all of this is located. It's really easy to use. Um, just to kind of spell out some of the things that I use, uh, Plugin Alliance, Lexicon, Eventide, Massenburg, SPL, a lot of these plugins, uh, software or and or, you know, hardware, of course, um, they really take our production to the next level. So far, we've got three plugins, um, guitar amplifier, two guitar amplifiers and guitar pedal. Um, again, in this case, I'm looking at a minimum of five effects that you use in order to create, you know, your usage or your loop, basically, and, and to show me that you can use or you can create usage you know, with these effects and, and uh, with that, you know, basically understanding the differences between bypassing it or keeping it on. A lot of these things are very, very important for me to see. Uh, you'd be surprised at how many people, well, you know, basically um, claim usage of these plugins and really maybe at times have them bypassed and not even use them. So in this case, it's nothing more, you know, certainly not to, you know, scare anybody into, you know, getting a bad grade or anything. It's just the opposite. It's, it's more about making sure that we're using it properly. So in this case, you know, just make sure that you do show me exactly what you're doing when you create this. And so once we get everything set, make sure that you take a screenshot of your mix window. Command Shift 4. So as you can see here, Command Shift 4, and it turns into this little camera. And so once I, I highlight whatever I'm going to highlight, I will be able to see what's ever on that computer screen. In this case, you can see I've just took, you know, taken a picture of, uh, you know, what I just, you know, have been talking about in that case, right in the bottom uh, right hand corner. The, the next aspect I think that's really important is to understand how to bounce and bouncing to disk. Most importantly, you know, your HD level um, non-compressed file is going to be PCM. But in the case of what we're turning in, in this case, because it's, you know, a lot to, uh, less in, in terms of, you know, storage and also in terms of, you know, uh, being able to send it back and forth through email. And MP3 is going to be vital for us. And so here are your settings. Um, feel free to uh, copy these. Um, I've got these here set for you at this point, like I had uh, mentioned to you when we were talking on Wednesday. Make sure you got your start point and your end point. The bit rate is all set as open as we can make that best encoding. And then make sure that you don't filter your frequencies. And you should get a really, really good sound on your MP3. MP4 is no different. However you decide that you want to do it, if you've got access to it, um, in this case, um, that would be um, basically perfect as far as what you're turning in. Definitely make sure that I get a screenshot, though. Command Shift 4 is going to create that picture, of course. Whatever you see, once you see your mix window, and I'll show you exactly what I'm looking for here shortly, once that mix window is set, then take a picture of it so that I can see what you've done. And so in this case, as you've taken a picture, if this was me and turning this in, I would see that you've only used three plugins. So I want you to do more, of course, right? And in this case now, let's just go back and uh, let's figure out what we got. So here's our hit that we've created uh, when we were talking basically through Zoom. Uh, I basically cycled this first section, the A section. So through this A section, essentially, what I want to do then is hit Command 2. And I'll be able to see the tracks that we've created for this A section. And I'll just very quickly just kind of go through some things in real time. Um, and uh, when, you know, we get done, of course, when we talk on Zoom, obviously, I'll be able to, you know, obviously articulate a lot of what we're talking about here. I'll run through this again in Zoom um, as, 
we've got all this set essentially you'll see that it'll be working backwards in real time but most importantly um, you know as I'm rolling through you know I'll basically you know try to cover what we're real you know what we're doing but I just hope that you see I'm really just kind of having fun with this I'm just kind of you know reacting to it essentially one of the most important aspects that I could talk about in terms of our effects is your usage of EQ and of course you'd say EQ is not necessarily an effect well it's certainly an insert and that's going to account as an effect as you could see in this case so EQ I think is going to be very very vital let me show you what I mean check it out <laughs> Note that I'm soloing, so I can only hear each individual instrument for that part, and that's going to help me hopefully isolate certain frequencies that you know will help bring out that part. In this case, I hear some low end that I need, and then I also hear some high end that I need, but I don't necessarily need all of it. Check it out. just that little bit, we basically filtered out some of this low end to just kind of tighten up certain things. And I brought out some of the high end to give it a little bit of a breath, you know, a little bit of air. Really though, there's not much to it. It's, it's very, very subtle and, uh, you know, easy, very, you know, very, very simple stuff. And uh, um, like, I, like I was saying, it's, it's a very common practice in terms of almost uh, every professional in that sense to just kind of subtly utilize EQ on each individual track. Think of it as using a, a console an analog console you've got an analog console in front of you each track is rolling there basically and you're going to use the the eq as you're using the console and that's kind of what we're doing here we're just basically making the console we'll keep going Noting here I'm bringing out a little bit more of the bass because we cut some of that kick drum on the drums. I'm going to bring more of that bass out. We've, we've got more room for it. You know, so in that case, now we're just adding a little bit more of that low end color and I'm cutting out the highs. <laughs> Now, just simple stuff, and I'm sure some of you probably already note this, but you know, for some, and obviously in this class as we continue on, we're going to really study some of these elements. But just roll through here and try some of these things. One of the things that I really like to utilize as well are dynamics. And one of my favorite, of course, many you know, professional engineers, of course, um, and certainly not exclusive to myself. I've, I've, you know, I, I learned these tricks you know, many, many years ago, of course. And uh, as you guys note, uh, for those of you that uh, this is the first time that you've seen it, don't be afraid of it. One of the things that you know, was, was certainly really interesting for me in this case was how easy it is to use. Think of this as just simply a nice, fancy way to be able to turn something up and to be able to contain certain things. So in this case, this is just simply a compressor. So as I called this up, I found this in Dynamics. 
This compressor is really important for me because what it allows me to do is, is now in this case, it allows me to be able to take these drums, that brick beat, and it allows me to be able to, let's say, for example, tighten up some of those, those sounds, those transients, some of the, the snare sounds and some of the things that might sound a little bit abrasive. Maybe what I could do is, is take that attack and not make it sound so tight. I can make it kind of, you know, in my own words, whoosh a little bit. Or I could make some of those sounds last a little bit longer, for example. And I have total control over that. That's what's called the envelope of your sound. And, and you know, many of us look at this in terms of, you know, let's say MIDI in terms of uh, some of the keyboards that we have. We're able to do that with, you know, with our electronics. But in this case, we're doing that with a compressor. So I hope this is a lot of fun for you as far as, you know, for some of you, you know, really delving into the compressor for the first time. For those that hadn't, let me show you where all the logic's juice is at. So in this case, you know, as I just call up this compressor very quickly. Check out how beautiful this is. I'm going to shut auto gain off. I'm going to shut off our envelope so that it's set to what we're doing essentially at this point, right? So for those drums, I want the attack not to be so tight, but I want it to be open a little bit. And I want it to last a little bit longer. So the kick drum sounds, you know, a little um, more open. So the snare sounds a little more open, but it's very, very subtle. At the same token, the most important part about this is, is that I can turn up the drums, in this case here, as well as I could turn up the drums on my fader on this side. Check it out. Now that's bypassed. We really kind of lose a lot of that, that depth. We lose a lot of the character of the drum. Isn't that interesting? It's very, very subtle, but at the same time, listen, bypassed. I turn it back on, and hopefully you can perceive that it's, it's actually helping the stereo field. It sounds wider, it sounds bigger. But at the same token, we can easily make or break it. You notice when I turn it up too loud, of course, it starts sounding like we're distorting. Check it out. Obviously, we can't use that. We have to be very, very subtle about this. And so I think of it like cooking, you know, just a, you know, a little bit goes a long way. So think about your amplitude levels here. You see where I'm at zero dB? That's going to be your unity gain. Of course, we're hardly changing the level at that point. And then just subtly just kind of turn it up. But hopefully, you'll be able to have a lot more control over bringing something out. Another fun thing for those of you that are going to use these compressors is if you click up here under the top, we have several different ones that you can pick from. If you utilize your distortion function here on the bottom right hand corner, just simply hit soft. What you'll notice is the output algorithm of each individual compressor that you see will be simulated. And so as you continue in the program, as you'll see, I'll show you the history of every single one that they're simulating. It's, it's quite fascinating. And you'll find that, let's say, for example, on these drums, if I'm looking for something to hopefully create a little bit more bass, maybe what I could do is use something that's attenuating more bass. In this case, this compressor is simulating tubes. Let me show you what I mean. Bypassed. Isn't that really neat how that brings that out? So without a compressor, then in that case, of course, we're missing some of our, our frequency attenuation because that compressor is actually creating some of those tones. Isn't that awesome? So now if I wanted to, I could actually go through and do the same thing with the bass. Maybe in that case, we've got our channel EQ set the way we want it. But maybe what I could do now is hitting Command 2, I can get to my mixer. And let's just check out where that bass is at. And let's do the same thing. Maybe just add a simple compressor. <laughs>
even through little speakers. Isn't that wild how nice that comes out? It really, really helps certain things. Now, let's say, for example, the client says, that's great, we like that, but that bass needs more. What else could we do? Well, maybe we could still use that compressor, and I will just for the sake of, you know, just having some fun. I'm going to turn it down a little bit so we don't overuse it. And let's call up an amplifier and maybe a bass amp. Why not? Just try stuff. Maybe potentially in some cases, this is always when I love to be, you know, in the room with you guys. I'm not really sure who's a bass player. Every once in a while, we'll get certain cats that are actually bass players. You have cabinets that you could simulate in this case. I don't want to take you away from you know, your cabinet. You could even go one step further and, you know, take the bass out, re-record it, bring it back in, of course. But in this case, you know, it's pretty easy for us, especially for those of us that don't have bass cabinets. Um, maybe we could simulate some of those things. In this case, this is definitely something that's going to be pretty aggressive, right? A big giant, what is that, probably a 15 or an 18, you know, 10 and two fives. But if we wanted to change that out, we could come in here and we could just get something a little bit different. Direct, we do classic cabinet. It's This guy's the limit, really. It's pretty cool. The other aspect, of course, is that if you wanted to simulate that old school tube, you could. And that's kind of what I wanted to do in this case. Let's try it. Kind of gets that little thud that I was looking for. Kind of bring it out just a touch, right? Same idea, of course. You're going to make yours much more perfect. Obviously, in this particular case, I'm just kind of rolling through in real time. Um, just, you know, for hypothetical, so you can kind of see as it rolls. But in this case now, as you can see, simple channel EQ, attenuating just a little bit of that low, cutting some of those highs. On the same bass channel, I'm doing a little bit of compression, just a touch. Utilizing the algorithm of this particular compressor. And then, lastly, just kind of getting a little color and what it would sound like if we ran it through a bass amplifier. Now, of course, no rules. Whatever you decide sounds good. It's totally up to you. But as you can hear now, basically, I've got those drums in that bass part really rolling through. <laughs> So I want to take care of some of these things too. I could do the same thing. I could do the same thing here with the compressor through my dynamics, right? Let's call up a compressor. We know that pad is set. So maybe I want that pad to last a little longer. I don't want it to be so tight, so I'll just you know set the attack just a little bit more open. Shut auto gain off shut off our envelope of course if this is clicked you're using it automatically maybe not a bad way to go when you're first utilizing it but you know as you're continuing on I mean you're all the next level professionals of course so shut it off and, and uh, have access to your envelope you'll find it's really beautiful the other aspect of course is now we take a threshold get your threshold as close to zero as possible let's keep this very transparent the more we roll this in and the more we set this further back what you're going to find is, is you're basically just sending the signal into the compressor this way and that's going to be a no-no especially for those that uh, are looking for that transparency to try to do the things that we're doing here where we're just subtly bringing things out obviously you overusing the compressor is going to be very very easy to do if we don't understand what the threshold is so open that threshold up get it as close to zero as possible check it out here's our pad now basically <laughs> Now, oh, I'll overuse the compressor so you can see what happens when we do that. We've lost the signal completely. And you can see the meter as the meter sets. It takes the signal and it ducks it all the way back. And so in order for us to actually bring the signal back, of course, we've got to make that up. And that's going to you know, really bring out the, the sound of the compressor. And in many cases, you don't want to do that. So in this case, just keep it subtle. Thank you. 
So I just simply called up the Liquid Flow Synth Pluck. That was the second one. And I'm just lis listening to them together to get them to go. So I just changed it from one to the other. One was Platinum Digital, and now I made the other one Vintage Fet. Essentially what it's doing is, is it's making this sound like it's coming from this device. So it sounds just a little bit different. I think of it very similar to like those amplifiers. When we call up a different amplifier head, essentially it's going to sound just a touch different, right? So as you can see here, the same idea, the threshold's very close to zero. Um, I'm subtle in terms of the case of our makeup. I don't want to turn that up too much. And that attack, again, I, I don't want it to necessarily be too tight in this case, but I don't want it to be too open. And that release, I'm just going to open it up just a little bit, but not too much. Hopefully, uh, the simplicity of this, you'll see it's uh, very, very easy to get you know a, a, a very consistent sound, especially with these tools. And as you can see here, our minimum in this you know, exercise is going to be five. I've gone to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen already, fourteen, something like that, right? So as we keep, you know keep going, you'll see it's very, very simple in order for us to do this. But I don't want to waste your time. I'm just going to keep doing the same tricks in this case so that you could kind of see through repetition what we can do in order to really bring something out and how easy it is. I'll keep going. <laughs> Doesn't that really bring out that topper? And you'll notice on this compressor, we don't have access to the envelope. So it's really, your, it's a very simple plugin. You've got your threshold, keep it close to zero, and we can just simply turn it up just a touch. <laughs> nice huh noticing too on our output you see how it's going into the red but you really don't hear it clipping that's the beauty of this and so as we get closer and closer to that professional level you'll see we definitely want to at some point get into the red but if we do it too soon of course we're going to be running into some pops and some clicks and obviously we could hear that in some of the over usage and what we we're doing so let's keep going I've got the next section rolling up here and so I'm going to do the same thing I'm just going to kind of cycle that section and let's just make sure we're doing exactly what we want to do in this section. Same idea, you see how some of these, just in the case of, you know, just working too quickly. Remember that we want those clips to be whole clips, and you see how they're highlighted. Um, and basically, in this case, they're just kind of, you know, grayed out a little bit. So as this is highlighted and you see this grayed out, just simply hit Control L and create your whole clip. I'll do the same thing right here on my topper. Right. And the same thing here, too. Okay. Now, there we go. That's better. Let's hear it. There's our drums, right? Well, if those are our drums and we were happy with the way that the other one sounded and we had a pretty good control, what can I do? Well, it's very similar to editing. Just simply hit Option, hold down Option, and then drag over, and you'll get exactly the same compressor that you had on the other channel. You could do the same thing to the EQ. I'm holding Option and just dragging over. 
It's one of my favorite aspects about utilizing these plugins, of course. One of my favorite aspects of using a DAW. Once I got that section rolling and once I'm happy with it, now I've got kind of a fast pass in order for me to get my drums where I want them. Check it out. I'll do the same thing for the bass. Cool. Same thing here. You hear how that tightened things up? We took away a lot of the breadth of a room basically there. Of course, if we leave that and we have too much of that bass building up, in this case, I'm just losing some of that bass, but check out this if I leave this alone. You'll hear this. Much tighter. Very subtle though, of course, right? And then let's just bring out some air. Another thing we want to do on that shaker, let's just compress it a little bit. Nothing to it, right? Threshold close to zero, of course, keeping your ratio, you know, anywhere from about two to four to one. Never going crazy like this. Of course, in this case, you're looking at that as what we call a brick wall limiter. The second that the compressor kicks in at this point, you're going to hear it. It's not going to be musical at all. In this case, this should be very, very subtle. We'll talk about this later on, too, of course, what all these controls mean. Right now, let's just kind of mess around a little bit. Of course, in this case, you've got your access to your envelope as well. Hearing it all back, once we've got this set, you can see here, very simple stuff. For the most part, I've got channel EQ, and I've got a compressor on each track. Another thing I want to note, that you've got your signal flow from top to bottom. And so once I've got the signal rolling in, essentially what that means is, is that we've got our track. And our track then, once we're processing something, in this case that shaker, that shaker is being processed by the channel EQ first, and then the compressor. Something that's maybe sort of fun for some of you to point out is that you could create a different sound by changing that tone or changing where that plugin is set. That tone will change from that point of having the compressor first and then adding your EQ later. Now again, in this case, if this is the first time you're messing around with you know things like that, you know, just mess around. Try, just have it set. In these cases, I, you know, in these cases, I just like to kind of point certain things out. Obviously, um, maybe potentially for some of you, um, it might be something you might want it in the back of your mind. Just this idea, as I hit Command Two, of signal flow. In this case, I'm hitting my EQ first for the most part, right? If I wanted to, in this case, change this around, which I probably should, I'll hit my EQ again for the, you know, first, then to the amplifier, then to the compressor. In this case, I don't have any EQ on this one, but I certainly could put it there, right? If I double click, you're gonna see that that EQ will show up in that third slot. If I wanted to change it where it's at in terms of its signal flow, I just simply move it. So now I've got EQ in this liquid, uh, let's see what that's called, liquid pluck, liquid synth pluck. Now we have EQ first, 
then we'll have our pedal second then our amplifier third and that will be our signal flow right so it is no different than if we're plugging it in and essentially of course you know no pun intended these are plugins so I hope that makes sense you know I, I, I certainly want to make sure that especially at this stage we're oversimplifying we're definitely looking to have fun so really you know don't overthink it just simply start trying things have some fun with some things in this case I'm just calling up things that hopefully will help in terms of timbre and help in terms of tone shaping but I'm not going to leave here without talking about what we could do with some effects well in this case looking at this chorus some of those synth parts and things like that, maybe we want to put some reverb to it. Maybe we want to make it sound a little more open. Let's do that. I'm going to just start calling up, in this case, as I'm working in real time, I'm going to call up simple reverb plugins. The one I'm using is called the Space Designer. Let me show you how it works. <laughs> it with it nice little dust and with that said a little bit goes a long way I'm probably overusing it just a touch now we've got a little bit of reverb on that shaker I'm gonna start putting some effects to some of these synths <laughs> So hopefully that's going to give it a little bit of a drive. Now we got the weekend going, right? I lose that reverb and I really lose some of the magic of that loop. that simple and uh, the same thing I, I run the risk of you know spending three hours and having a you know, ton of fun I'm, I'm sitting here you know and definitely enjoying myself just simply messing around and hopefully you guys will too so as we take this back as you can see here it looks like we've just populated a bunch of stuff but as you could hear and hopefully as you could see as we were rolling through it's very simple moves there's not much to it you know in some cases and for the most part it's more about timbre it's more about bringing out certain frequencies and then in some cases it's about having some fun some delay, you know, fun and, and, you know, maybe in some cases, you know, some of the space echo and getting, you know, some of the bigger, you know, sounds and things like that. 
but we certainly don't want to do that for everything because we run the risk of you know sounding mushy but don't let me tell you you guys just go ahead and try things and see what you know see what you find most importantly now as you can see on our professional mixes out keep our stereo out set to unity gain don't mess with that if you feel like it is too loud which it very well could be remember always going back to your trick highlight and bring it down. All right, so let's say we're all done. Let's get ready to bounce it and we'll be set. In this case though, Remember, the only way that I'm going to be able to know what you're doing is if you take a picture of this. So remember, Command Shift 4. Now I've got access to my mix window. I can highlight everything just like what I've done here. And now I've got a picture here down in the bottom screen. So when I double click on that, you can see that that's what you're going to send to me is this, this file. It's just basically a screenshot. So think of it as you know sending me a picture, but that's what I'm looking for right there, right? So. I need a picture of that screenshot as we've got it set. And then I also want to make sure that we've got an MP3 bounce. And so if you come down here to your bounce, make sure we're set. We're starting, of course, on one to whatever the track is set. So that's going to be very important that you've got that, uh, um, you know, those parameters. Make sure that you've got it perfect. And then I've got the notes there for you. But in this case, as you can see here, it is no different. Make sure that you utilize this. This is everything that we're going to be looking for in this class for your bounces. I really hope this is fun, and most importantly, please uh, don't overthink this. You don't have to copy everything that I've done here, but if you do, feel free to. Um, it's definitely something that's been hip, you know, to me, of course. Obviously, I didn't, uh, I certainly didn't invent this wheel. Obviously, um, most importantly, if you have any questions or if you need anything, make sure that you let me know. I'm always happy to help. Take care, everybody.